June 6, 2020. The beloved author behind Harry Potter, J.K. Rowling, posted a tweet that was categorized as hate speech to the transgender community. She said, if sex isn't real, there's no same-sex attraction. If sex isn't real, the lived reality of women globally is erased. I know and love trans people, but erasing the concept of sex removes the ability of many to meaningfully discuss their lives. It isn't hate to speak the truth. Carolina, welcome to the show. I'm just curious, what do you think about JK's tweet? What, what do you think? Yeah, I think, you know, when you paint something in a negative light towards a particular group of people um, without involving them in the conversation, it's considered hate speech. Really? Yeah. Chris, would you agree? Not in this situation. I think she was very, like, careful to the way she said it, even saying that she loves transgender people. I think she was just speaking her truth and, at the end of the day, like, the scientific truth that she was speaking. She was standing up for women. Was it, though, careful or was it just mitigating the risk of what she was saying? Good point. I think, I think what she said was true to her. And she was, like I said, standing up for women. So I don't think she was trying to be hurtful to transgender people. She was more so protecting women. But would you, why would you stand up for women if majority or other women do not agree with your statement? That's not even, we don't even know we that a majority that. doesn't agree with her, though. That's why I said, we, like, other women might not agree with it. So no, I think the, the, be stood up. the conversation stems from, from both of you, is, like, defining the line of hate speech. And I guess that's what we'll get into today. Bianca, take the first crack at this. How would you define the line of free speech and hate speech? Oh, boy, that's a tough one. I think I would... I think it's about regulation. Who's regulating it and who's defining it? And Interesting. as long as we're, we don't have actual... Bodies that are different. Bianca, hold that thought. We're going to get into our studios and see what the people have to say. Let's see. How do you feel about Canada's free speech measures? Do you think Canada has free speech? Yes, no, in between? More than the U.S.? I don't know. I feel like there is a kind of a cutoff point, maybe more by the general public, just being like people are maybe against certain things people say. They'll yeah. take greater offense to it than what it's actually intended to be type of thing. You're entitled to your own opinion. What's the line between like allowing people to have free speech and like shutting down hate speech? See, I feel like that differs from person to person because everyone's going to have different opinions and nothing yeah. that different one person... Different level of feelings. Exactly. Yeah. Like what I say could be different from what you say could yeah. be different from what you would yeah. say or agree with, you know what I mean? So it's kind of hard to actually pick where that line would go. Yeah. Um, I think there should be more tolerance for freedom of speech. I don't even know, to be honest. I think if you have something Something bad yeah. to say, just say it at home where nobody yeah. can hear you. Regardless of how controversial it ends up being, everyone has that free speech. You know what I mean? Yeah. You need to have that element of of being able to express things and also to try to like just vibe or be okay True. with other people's truth. So clearly there's a difference of opinion on the streets, although the line seems to be questionable across the board. Bianca, before the break of the streeters, I asked you, how would you define the line? And I unfortunately had to cut you off, but what do you have to say about it? I think that there is a fine line, but it always depends on the person's individual perspective. And so there, we, we can't define the line because if you speak to a room of 100 people, somebody's going to get offended. So I don't think there is a, a way to define it properly that everyone can, it, it can't be a uniform thing. It's just perspective at some point. Right. Okay, but hold on. Is offense... The line? Because you just made a comment there that was interesting. Somebody's going to get offended in response to my question of hate speech. And because they are, then you, you can't define what hate speech is versus free speech because somebody will get offended somewhere. Okay, interesting. We'll, we'll hold that thought. We'll get into a little bit more. Um, Carolina, what did, stood out to you with the streeters? Yeah, for sure. I think, you know... I agree that, you know, maybe we can be a little bit more tolerable of people and their free speech. But I also wanted to say that there is a clear line between hate speech and free speech. And I know that you mentioned, you know, don't be an... Yeah, exactly. But also, you know, like if you're saying something to a whole room and only one person gets offended, maybe it wasn't based towards a greater group of people, you know, versus like let's, you know, some celebrities tend to speak to a specific group of people based on religion or, you know, sexual preference. That's a little bit more of a hate speech than just stating your opinion. Interesting. Chris, would you agree? I would say people are very easily offended, in, especially in today's day and age. And I think that comes from uh, controlling of speech throughout the school sector, is what, starting in elementary school and going onwards from there. So I think that we live in a time of overly politically correctness, and it's actually leading to more people being easily offended. I'm a rule the world. I'm a rule the world. Yeah. 